Greetings to you all my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. I hope you're doing well in the Lord, persevering on the way to heaven, being close to Jesus, making deliberate efforts to be close to him through reading the word of God, praying, fasting, and everything else as the Holy Spirit leads. Because the Bible says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Well, today I thought of making a video just to tell us about or just to encourage you, my brothers and sisters out there watching about the way to heaven. The way to heaven is not an easy one. It is hard. The Bible says the way is narrow. And the trials and temptations that we go through here on earth equates to going through a wilderness. Just before we begin, we're just going to pray. Uh, a prayer just for the Holy Spirit to open up our hearts, to open up our minds, and even for me who's actually sharing just uh, to be led by the Holy Spirit and not to go astray. So just join me in this prayer. Our Lord and Father, we come before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, uplifting your name, exalting your name, glorifying, honoring you, and adoring you. My Father, please remove the spirit of hypocrisy in our hearts. Please remove the spirit of double-mindedness. Please remove the spirit of worldliness. We rebuke every lust of the flesh, every lust of the eyes, every pride of life, O oh Lord. We refuse to be earthly-minded, O oh God. We command that we shall be heavenly-minded in the name of Jesus Christ. We shall conform to the standards of, the, of God and not those of the world in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to see the world as you see it, my Father, because the world is fleeting. Help us to fulfill your will for us here on this earth, which is to praise you, to bring glory to your name, and to tell others about you, O oh Lord Jesus Christ. You created us, O oh God, to bring glory to you. May we not bring shame to you. May we use our bodies as instruments of righteousness and not instruments of wickedness. We refuse for that to be religious. We refuse the spirit of religion, but we pray that you shall be led by the Holy Spirit. We shall have a relationship with Jesus Christ, and we shall not be religious. We rebuke the spirit of religion in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and please give us relationship with you. Help us to be led by the Holy Spirit, and I pray that for all those who are not yet baptized with the Holy Spirit, that you, oh God, my Father, may baptize them with the Holy Spirit. We rebuke for that Jesus Christ double-mindedness. We rebuke double-mindedness. We rebuke worldliness. Oh, we pray, Lord Jesus Christ, that you may open up our minds our hearts and help us to understand your truth in the name of Jesus Christ we pray amen and just to begin there are many things that I've learned in my journey as a Christian from 2011 to date many things that when I look at the world right now I realize that Satan has deceived a lot of people and uh, we always emphasize my sister Rachel and I always emphasize in our posts that uh, we should ask individually, we should ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So why should we have the Holy Spirit? The Bible does tell us to ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, according to the Bible, leads us to all truth. So the Holy Spirit is going to convict you of the true word of God. The Holy Spirit is going to reveal to you new mysteries, which of course are in line with God's word. One key thing uh, there is that whatever the Holy Spirit tells you will not be in objection to the word of God. The Bible does say that the Holy Spirit is going to reveal to us the whole truth. And so for the Bible to say the whole truth, it means that the whole truth was not stipulated down in the Bible. But even this new truth should not uh, lead us astray when someone says, oh, the Holy Spirit has told me that now people can fornicate or something in that order. That is not correct because we know that the Bible uh, is actually against that. So the Holy Spirit actually leads us to mysteries that help us to uh, strengthen our relationship with God. The Holy Spirit leads us to holiness. He leads us. He leads us away from the world. And so today I'm going to talk about going through the wilderness on the way to heaven. Now, Satan has created a standard of Christianity that has trapped many people. When you look at many Christians today, they are living uh, their lives casually. In fact, many people who call themselves Christians are living a double life. Look at this time, for example. This is the time where the world is actually watching the World Cup and all that. So many people find it okay to watch football, spend all their time watching football. They don't pray. They're saying, no, this is the World Cup and all that, but if someone had the Holy Spirit in them, the Holy Spirit would actually reveal to them that football is an idol. 
Many people have taken football as an idol, but certain will tell you, oh, it's just a sport. Football has become the new god of this world. So this is not something that I'm imposing on anyone. This is something that the Holy Spirit has revealed to us before stating that football is an idol. In previous years, we've heard of stories in certain countries where there was a stampede at a stadium just because people went to watch football or because people were celebrating uh, a country's victory. But how many people, how many stories have you heard that there was a stampede in church because people wanted to go and hear the word of God? I don't think I've ever heard of any such story stating that uh, there was a stampede because people wanted to hear the word of God. And just look at where most of this football is watched. What place is that? It is mostly watched in drinking places. We heard on the news that Qatar uh, actually prohibited the drinking of alcohol at the World Cup. And of course, we started seeing on social media how people were trying to sneak in alcohol covered as if it is a soft drink. Satan is going to lie to you that, oh, it's just a sport. You know, just, uh, you know, watch football, it's just a sport. You won't be addicted and all that. But that is a big lie. That is a big lie. It's more like uh, going to a bar every day. Uh, of course, there's nothing wrong with having a soft drink. Uh, maybe you can go to a bar every day. You're saying, I'm going to have a soft drink. The next day, I'm going to have a soft drink. Are you telling me if you go there for the whole year, you're just going to be having soft drinks with atmosphere that's there. You're not going to fall into fornication, adultery, and other sins that are associated. That is definitely not true. So football has become an idol. The Bible says friendship with the world is enmity with God. Just look at how the world has made football their friend. Are you telling me that you're still going to be God's friend if you embrace what the world has embraced? Going deep into today's topic, we're talking about the state of Christianity in the world. All of us grew up thinking that you just have to pray in the morning and at night and when you are sick and on Sunday, but that is a lie. The Bible says we should pray without ceasing. Look at the life of Jesus Christ. The Bible stipulates many times uh, that Jesus went alone off to the mountains to pray. And why was he doing that? He was trying to stay in touch with his father. And why was he doing that? He was trying to stay in touch uh, with God. It is only when you're in touch with God that you can actually resist the temptations of the world. The Bible also shows us an instant where uh, the disciples of Jesus were failing to cast out a demon out of a boy. And Jesus came and said, this kind of demon does not go out except through prayer and fasting. And Jesus Christ cast it out immediately. He didn't say, let me go and pray and fast, then I'll come back. No, he cast it out immediately. And so this tells you that Jesus Christ had a fasted life. Paul in the Bible also tells us that he keeps his body under subjection, lest after preaching, he himself should be cast away. So how do we uh, keep our body under subjection? The Bible in Galatians chapter 5 says, uh, the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit lusts against the flesh. And we should crucify the flesh along with its desires. So we do this through connecting to God in the spirit. And sometimes it requires you to disconnect from the world around you. So what does this mean? This means that you put your body under subjection through fasting and you connect with God spiritually. Of course, if you have a very busy life, you can still fast while you are. Of course, if you have a busy life, you can still fast while you are working while you're at school and all that as long as uh, before you leave in the morning or in the middle of the night or after you come back, you allocate adequate time to spend with God and pray and get close to him. I remember when I just first came to God, one of the longest prayers I ever prayed was 13 minutes. That time I was not accustomed uh, to spending time in prayer with God uh, because we just pray morning prayer, night prayer, when you're sick, when you're about to eat and all that. So I remember one time I closed my eyes. I prayed and prayed and prayed. According to me, I thought I prayed and prayed and prayed. When I opened my eyes, I discovered that it had been 13 minutes. Then I was, you know, discouraged. I was like, hmm, I thought I prayed for over one hour. But then as I said, praying, it became natural to me. Uh, one time in 2012, I prayed for four hours 
straight with my hands lifted up and i did not get tired this was something supernatural this was god's doing i prayed in that uh, uh surrendered state with my hands up for four hours i didn't even realize that it was four hours that day i was fasting i prayed and prayed and prayed because i felt like stopping when i want to stop i just heard uh, the holy spirit telling me keep praying keep praying keep praying and before i realized it it had been four hours so uh the power of prayer is not in the length sometimes the holy spirit will lead you to pray short prayers sometimes will lead you to pray long prayers and the and in these long prayers he can lead you to pray for specific needs he can lead you for example to intercede for people he can uh, uh lead you to pray maybe for someone who's sick he can show you a vision just to uh, for you to pray about something to uh, buying something that is about to happen he can uh, reveal to you some sin that you need to get rid of during this time so you should pray as you are led by the holy spirit i remember one time my sister rachel uh was praying she prayed for about uh, five hours if i remember correctly she prayed and prayed and prayed and um her neighbors at that time it was quite a long time ago her neighbors at that time uh, were shocked like how can she pray that long because you know sometimes when you pray uh, you know, you're praying, you're speaking in tongues, and people can even hear you praying. And so uh, her neighbors began saying, oh, maybe she must be going through some challenge, or maybe she went through some challenge previously. More like people out there have the perception that you can only pray that vehemently when you have a challenge. But since you got baptized with the Holy Spirit, we've learned that God can lead you to pray that way just to get close to him. You may not even have a single problem, but the Holy Spirit sometimes may lead you to pray like that, just to get close to Him, to intercede for people, or just to praise and worship the Lord our God. So it depends on how the Holy Spirit leads you. And uh, we've heard many people saying, oh, that person prays because, yeah, they share messages, yeah, it's their calling. Prayer is not their calling. Prayer is for every one of us. The Bible says we should pray without ceasing. So in short, the point I'm trying to say is that Every uh, Holy Spirit baptized Christian should be praying meaningful prayers, not just praying in the morning, uh, like, uh, thank you, Lord, for waking us up. Of course, that is a very legitimate prayer. It is very legitimate. It should not be, um, you know, brushed aside. We should thank God for waking us up. It is by His grace. We should thank God for the food on our table. We should thank God, or rather, we should commit our night uh, before we sleep into God's hands. But other than that, what time are we spending in prayer, in reading the Bible, in singing, in fasting, in evangelizing, and doing everything else? I remember the time when I just finished writing my grade 12. That was in um, 2011. So in 2012, I stayed at home for about one year as I was waiting to get bursary or a scholarship at university. And during this time, I would, um, in the morning, I would eat my breakfast, then I go out and evangelize. I'll come back, I'll come and read the Bible. I had a tight schedule. And then people ask me like, but you're doing nothing. You're still waiting for a, a, a scholarship at university. I'm like, I'm very busy. I'm very busy. No, I knew what I was busy for. I was very, very busy. So it is like that. The Holy Spirit leads you. The Holy Spirit guides you. It is not just for those who've seen heaven, hell. It is a personal journey that each and every one of us has with God. So what this does is that it helps you to be on the right track with God. It keeps you aware of uh, sin. It keeps you aware of what you should stay away from and just keeps you in the right path. It transforms your mind to be to obey the word of God because the Bible says we should transform our minds. And the more we read the Bible, the more our minds are transformed according to God's will. Staying close to God also helps us not to be ashamed of Him. The world out there is made in such a way that things of Satan are glorified and things of God are deemed to be embarrassing. But the more time we spend with God, the more time that the Lord actually uh, takes that care of the world away from us. The things of the world become dim to us. The things of God become more realistic. They become more alive to us. So, so that is also the key of uh, overcoming being embarrassed of Jesus Christ. Uh, it also helps one to obey God in the sense that, for example, when I find that I'm praying more and more and more, I don't even care if someone thinks I'm weird because I want something wrong. I don't even mind. To me, my mind is just focused on heaven. And that is genuinely so, not just saying for the sake of proving a point. In my heart, if someone says, oh, you're wearing this, that, 
or what are you doing if someone says oh where are you rushing to be like oh i'm going to pray you know there's just that closeness that comes uh, between you and jesus christ so that is the importance of actually praying when you talk about the wilderness it comes in two forms so this wilderness comes in the sense that uh, firstly you're going to have to spend a lot of time in the presence of god and doing so is not easy for, for example fasting is not easy it is not easy it is a deliberate choice you wake up every morning you pray you wake up every you wake up every morning you read the bible and do this and that so all of this is a great sacrifice to god so this is what it means when say passing through the wilderness is definitely not easy and the other part of passing through the wilderness comes in the issue of uh, testings and trials testing and trials if you look at um, Paul in one of his books in the New Testament, he said, I bear in my body the marks of Christ. What are the marks of Christ? We know that Paul was arrested, beaten up, and everything else he was persecuted. In other countries, Christians are persecuted to the point of maybe to the point of being killed and all that. But in my country, my country is a Christian nation. 95% of people in Zambia are Christians. So you find that no one will persecute you for Christianity, for being a Christian, but they will persecute you for following holiness. That is also a form of persecution. People will mock you, people will laugh at you, people will torment you emotionally, mentally, and all that just because you're different. That is also a form of persecution on its own. And um, that is the only way to heaven. There is no other way. You can't say, oh, I'm going to be holy, but make sure the world likes me. That means you're going to compromise. So the only way to heaven is through the wilderness, as Jesus Christ has shown us in the Bible, through praying, fasting, reading the word of God, and obeying God's will 100%. And how can we obey God's will? Through being baptized with the Holy Spirit. One time I had a dream which really encouraged me uh, because uh, after I started spending a lot of time with God, I found that it was easy for me to start wearing long things without feeling funny about it when people stared at me. I began, uh, you know, embracing wearing long clothes without feeling any type of way, uh, you know, following holiness without feeling any type of way when someone does this and that. One day I had a dream, and in this dream, uh, it was around 6 p.m. Uh, around that time when the sun is, uh, you know, setting and it's getting dark. So I dreamed that I was walking on this uh, narrow road, but... Uh, all around me, there was something like a sewer swamp. So it was really a creepy atmosphere and it was a filthy atmosphere all around me. But I was on that road going and I thought to me, and I was going home. And in that dream, I was wearing a long, long skirt, which I have in real life. And as I was walking, I thought to myself, oh, this place is so filthy. It's quickly getting dark. Let me hurry home. And I found that as I walked, I kept climbing higher and higher and higher like I was going uphill before I realized it, that the home I was going to was not my physical home but home in heaven and I was so happy so Jesus Christ was trying to show uh, me that by obeying him physically like that spiritually I'm walking on the way to heaven so that was very encouraging for me so this video was shot by the whole M it's just to let us know that uh, this world is not our home. The Bible says we're pilgrims, we're peculiar people. So this means we're different from the world. And even the things that we do, they should not be are the same as the world. Let us not embrace casual Christianity. What does casual Christianity do? Casual Christianity tells you that as a woman, it is okay for you to wear um, uh, something that is kneeling. But that is not the kind of holiness that God wants us to have. God does not want us to have, have holiness. What God wants us to embrace for holiness. So I pray that the Lord touched you and that uh, you learned uh, something from this video. Most importantly, please pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Until then, please remember that the only way to heaven is through the wilderness. Jesus Christ is leading. We are following. The Lord bless you abundantly.